I'm telling you, dude, I have a good feeling I'm gonna get something good out of this legendary engram. Yo, question. guess what I got? Guess what I got? Got a thousand yards yeah, there. I'm scared to look at it. I'm scared to look at it, dude. Just put it on. Don't fine, look at fine, it. Fine, 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 fine. I'm putting it. I put it on. I put it on. I didn't look Yo. at it. Yo! Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. No way. You got the perfect. Shut up. Shut the up. Perfect shut one. up. The perfect sniper in the world, yo. Oh! Look at the perfect. Oh my god. Yo. No. Yo. No way. <laughs> no. Yo. No. This right here was a clip of Inkooch back in the day in Destiny 1 being blessed by the RNG gods. Now let me just say Destiny 1 in general was riddled with these type of reactions. From Galahorns dropping for the very first time to that God roll Ias Luna. God rolls and rarity back in D1 truly meant something. And I would argue and say that it meant something well into Forsaken because I still remember getting absolutely hyped when one eye mass dropped, which took many, many months after the the release of Forsaken for it to finally drop. RNG has been a factor inside of Destiny since its inception. But the argument is, was it better or worse when things were dictated by RNG? Demon Joe actually put up this tweet with this clip of Encooch stating that videos like this are exactly why I prefer RNG drops compared to crafting since nothing is nearly as exciting as the drops you could get in D1 and pre-crafting Destiny 2. And I think that's a shame. Bungie should have just doubled down on loot focusing instead of giving free god rolls. Now, Demon Joe isn't the only one saying this. Many people actually agree with him. Paul Tassi literally tweeting out that crafting was ultimately a mistake and I will die on that hill. This is a common sentiment, which has pitted two sides against each other. Those in favor of weapon crafting and those in favor of pure RNG drops. Now guys, this is not the first time we have seen this argument and I'm not even talking Destiny 2. Back inside of Destiny 1 during House of Wolves, we had weapon re-rolling. You could literally take a weapon to the gunsmith and re-roll it. It would cost some amount of light, some weapon parts, some glimmer, but you had an opportunity to get a gun roll. Now, my people in the weapon crafting department you may look at this and think wow what a fantastic feature actually at the time many hardcore destiny players disliked this so much so that bungie stopped doing weapon re-rolling stating that weapon re-rolling ruined what destiny was all about which was those orangey drops but there was obviously pushback from people within the community that stated that this was a way to fight the randomness and that we shouldn't be at the mercy of rng because as amazing as that clip was of Inkooch celebrating his rng by getting that 1,000 yard stare with that god roll, how many clips was it him getting a garbage roll? Many of us have picked up drop after drop just to discover that all those rolls were garbage. Now, this actually led Bungie to try out a number of different things. Keep in mind, guys, this is part of the reason why Bungie did static rolls in year one of Destiny 2. They were like, hey, you're mad that your RNG is crap? Don't worry about it. Get the weapon once, you're good. So what? If it's the same roll every single time, be happy. You have everything. You don't have to stress about getting a god roll because there's only one roll. Not only is there only one roll, there's only one trait. Lol. It was hard for Bungie to find middle ground. And then Forsaken came and you had folks like myself that did not see Wave Splitter for months on end, that did not see One Eye Mask for a good seven to eight months after the expansion had released. And even though there are tons of clips out there of people being excited when those things finally dropped, whatever that weapon or god roll is, there are a number of clips that you don't see of folks getting absolutely shafted by RNG and Destiny. And let me just say, RNG is a fickle thing. We literally ran Wellspring and Savathun Spire the other day, the legend version of Savathun Spire, for three hours. For three hours! And you know how many Ascendant Alloys we got? Zero. Now, the drops finally started to happen. But for some reason, during that three-hour time frame, nothing was dropping. And before somebody jumps up and says, Cross, just go do the Witch Queen missions. Listen, it was a rival. I didn't want to do it. I felt like Savathun Spire or even Wellspring would at least net us something. But to get nothing... You see the argument that I'm actually hitting you with? This is the seesaw that Bungie has been dealing with now since Destiny 1. It's the reason why we have lost sectors that drop specific loot and exotics in rotation. And now we have a knockout system for exotics. And the biggest thing being weapon crafting. You see, weapon crafting says, hey, yeah, you may not get that god roll, but if you keep working hard enough, you'll eventually get enough deep sights to then craft your very own roll. Now, personally, guys, I completely ate up weapon crafting simply because RNG has been so punishing to me. And secondly, the craftable roles are just better. Sure, some of the enhanced perks don't really give you all that much. I'm looking at you, Precision Instrument. But there are some amazing benefits that enhanced traits offer over the base traits. 
and have the ability to actually control exactly what you want on your weapon for a completionist like myself has been a blessing but you don't necessarily get that freak out moment no one's really jumping up and down when they finally get that red border over so eat it instead they go and actually check how many red borders they got and there it is guys a checklist that is what destiny has kind of turned into a checklist of things to do and acquire and every season our vaults get fuller and fuller because we are fulfilling that checklist not only that we have resources within our season pass that allow us to get craft weapons and fulfill that checklist slightly faster that being deep sight harmonizers the beauty of rng aligning those stars aligning and blessing you with that god role is not really present inside of destiny and this is something that applies to not only our legendary weapons but also our exotics exotics to me feel really watered down go look in your inventory right now guys i guarantee you have a number of exotic ingrams just piled up exotics are just as common as legendaries and i know i got somebody right now that plays two three hours a week that's like yo cross speak for yourself not all of us get to play this game every day look that's fair but at the same time you should not kill the rarity and uniqueness of drops within destiny just to appeal to the casual player base but here's the thing guys i'm gonna lay it on you right now i'm gonna give you the truth of why weapon crafting exists number one it works with bungie seasonal model you see bungie doesn't really have to overthink things when it comes to bringing us a new game mode game mode cycle in game mode cycle out whether it's deep dives or seven inspire it's pretty much all the same thing it's not an activity that's meant to stay in the game forever having weapons tied to that activity will incentivize players to of course do that activity but if everything was tied to just rng people would complain because then the focus would be on the activity itself is the activity fun is this an activity worth doing just out of the sake of enjoyment now the conversation doesn't surround that because we're all too focused on the checklist we don't really care if the activity is that fun it would be nice if it's really fun but what we actually care about is getting our five deep sides and getting that craftable role and for the most part we are willing to jump on that treadmill at least temporarily every single season to get those craftable roles you see weapon crafting goes hand in hand with the seasonal model and if bungie ended up turning around and making everything rng related then the focus would be on the activity and then not only would the focus be on the activity the focus would then be on the weapon does this weapon even have rng roles worth grinding for now some would argue and say that the craftable version possesses that same question however with the craftable role we have freedom or at least the illusion of freedom we know what might not be a god roll today could be a god roll tomorrow therefore we take that craftable weapon and we put it in the vault and we wait for whenever it does roll around to be in a meta weapon you see ideally guys bundy wants everyone on the same page they want everyone to have access to the new weapons with the new roles without really separating that player that put in a thousand hours in that activity versus the player that put in 10. Dude, it meant something back inside of D1. When I saw someone with a grasp of a lock, I was like, yo, you got that perfect counterbalance roll? Ha! And you were truly envious of that person. And you would jump on that grind to get that thing. But the RNG gods either blessed you or it didn't. And when it didn't, this led to a lot of people complaining. Thus, the pendulum swung the other way. I think the reality is, at this point, guys, weapon crafting is a system that Bungie has built around, and they're going to continue to build around it. Now, they can come out tomorrow, and they can make changes. They could say, hey, you need 10 red borders in order to get the craftable version of the weapon they could even take it a step further and make it so that craftable weapons don't have enhanced perks so that folks would get excited about rng drops and i will say as soon as i see that a weapon is craftable it could be the nastiest godliest role that drops for me but i'm uninterested because in my mind i'm thinking about the craftable version i don't care about this god role that's in my hands i just care about crafting this thing to make an even better god roll but guys if bungie was to walk that back if they were just to say, hey, we're getting rid of enhanced perks, can you imagine the blowback? And listen, it's hard to defend removing crafting from the game when you literally have weapons like bottom dollar with like 20 traits in each column. How do you expect to get a god roll? Look at how many options you have. But he's like, yeah, we're gonna give you every trait combination in the game. Good luck. Destiny has kind of moved away from being a looter shooter to just being a chore list with shooting mechanics. Dude, it was wild back in Destiny 1 when you were turning in a blue and it suddenly became an exotic and again as excited as that person was i guarantee you rng did not work in everyone's favor like that it has always been punishing and this is a tightrope that bungie has continually walked for years and years for better or for worse there are a lot of people that say that weapon crafting shouldn't have happened there are a lot of people that think that exotics should have never been focusable that you should have never been able to go after exotics specifically from a lost sector that there shouldn't be any bad luck protection but my assessment of all of this guys is 
is that it's too late to walk things back. It's too late to suddenly go in the game and get rid of weapon crafting. It's too late to suddenly make exotics completely RNG across the game. And if you go a year without getting that exotic, so be it. It's too late for that, guys. At least for Destiny 2. I know you don't want to hear this, but this is why we are going to need a Destiny 3. I feel like that crazy guy in the basement. But at some point, Bungie is going to have to step back and they're going to have to really observe what has worked best for Destiny as a whole to address how rare is too rare and then eventually hit the reset button. But at this point, currently right now, guys, we are too deep. Now, before someone jumps in here and says, but Cross, sunsetting would have fixed this. Dude, at the end of the day, I still can't get behind sunsetting. Like, I still can't get behind spending hundreds of hours grinding for a weapon to then turn around and watch it get sunset after obtaining it. You see, sunsetting within a purely RNG game, that's brutal. That sucks. And I feel like where Bungie has gone with things by adding things like origin traits and new trait combinations, that incentivizes us to seek out that new version of that weapon. But whether or not weapon crafting should be taken out of the game or not, the reality is, guys, we're too deep for that. It's not going to go away. It's like airborne effectiveness. Bungie has committed way too hard to AE. It is a feature within our game, no matter what. It's literally a stat on all of our guns. All roads, though, lead to the future. It leads to what the hell is going to happen after the final shape. But in the meantime, I'm very curious to know, do you like weapon crafting within Destiny or would you prefer RNG drops? Please comment down below. Fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching. And as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right. Thank you.